This episode of the Fat or Future podcast is sponsored by, well, me and my diet crash course exclusively from Himalaya Podcast Networks. What is my diet crash course? Well, have you ever been curious about 20 of the top diets in the world? You wanted the cliff notes to all of them because you just don't want to read all the books. I have you covered with my diet crash course. 20 of the top diets in the world and maybe some you haven't heard of. Should you try them? What are they about? What does the research say? What does the research maybe not say? Himalaya.com forward slash diet and listen for free and use code diet to listen for two weeks of the Himalaya Diet Crash Course exclusively on the Himalaya Podcast Player. Himalaya.com forward slash diet and I will see you there. Thank you to Third Wheel Podcast Studio in LA for the great editing work on our show every week. If you're ever in LA and need a studio to use, they have full audio and video capabilities and awesome engineers. They also have a Seattle location coming soon. And of course, if you're just looking for production and editing, they have you covered there too. Check them out online at thirdwheelpodcaststudio.com. On this episode of the Fad or Future podcast, if you're in the bachelor nation, well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the bachelor bachelorette. My buddy, Peter Krause, health and fitness expert, he was on the show a couple years ago. We talk about that a little bit, but more, his health and fitness journey, how he opened up a studio in Madison, Wisconsin, how he thinks people are overthinking weight loss and how to get healthy. Maybe we just need to break it down and be more simplistic. This and much more on this episode of the Fat or Future podcast with my conversation with Peter Kraus. All right, what's going on? It's Joey Thurman, another episode of the Fat or Future podcast. And sitting in front of me is a man who might be better looking than I am. Not quite sure if we took a vote on that. Uh, well, <laughs> Peter, exactly. Peter Kraus, my friend. <laughs> what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Good catching up with you for a little bit before this. It's uh. It's been a little while. It's been a hot minute. So, yeah. Peter, you're a health fitness expert. You've been around the block. You've done Ironmans. Uh, you're kind of in the Madison area right now. You have your own fitness business. Uh, you're very well known. People probably saw you on uh, on TV on The Bachelorette, which, you know, I tell, I, let me tell you what. I don't want to talk about The Bachelorette. I do not want. I do not want to talk about that. But if you saw this man in The Bachelorette, would you get? Would you that you were third, if you will, right? Second, technically. Second, second, whatever. Second. I was, I was the backup. <laughs> he was the backup. Um, he is authentic as he came across. Uh, so a, a, like a lot of those people don't come across that way. But uh, I, I don't know, know if I, I, I like that because I came across as real boring when I watched it. You back. didn't come like, on, damn, you, like you my came personality was not real. there. I, well, that's the thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. When you're about to get married to a girl in ten weeks, you're like, oh shit, I got to be pretty. <laughs> like serious about this after like week two, I was like, wow, there's no joking around involved in this. So right. I mean, yeah, my demeanor going, very much changed. You're going on all these fancy dates and there's, there's no bills. There's nothing else. So of course you're, you're going to great. fall for somebody. But as far as that, yes, you actually do have a personality. If you think that you came across as dull, so he does have a personality. Well, thank uh, you, sir. Yeah. But I, I'm up Peter. We were doing a, we were, we were shirtless the first time we met each other. <laughs> 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 it's always a good way to start a friendship. I know, uh, I know the preview for the podcast now. We were shirtless when we met each other. People were like, oh my God. It's good. I had a little more abs then. That's yeah, for sure. We did, we did a <laughs> shoot for, was it Time Out Chicago? Dude, was that? Time Out Chicago, yeah. It was 2012? Is that right? Sounds right. right. Yeah, because yeah. I lived there 2011 to 2013, so yeah. Yeah, so we did this... Uh, this cover magazine shoot and it was like top hottest trainers in Chicago or something. And yeah, yeah, that, that, I, that happened. I like to just say that I was just top trainer. I leave out the hot part. <laughs> hey, I got that award from, from Chicago Tribune. So I don't have to take that out. <laughs> uh, damn it. I moved out of Chicago too soon, apparently. <laughs> yeah, you did. Well, I mean, if you ask my wife, I'm, I'm, and Peter knows my wife, um, hopefully she would say that I'm the more attractive one, but you know, privately, so. I'm not quite sure about yeah. that. And everybody's got their type. Yeah, they do, man. They do. Yeah, you, see? You've got the salt so, and pepper, and I have the quarantine haircut. See, I just I buzz it off now. That's smart, man. I, I was spending like $150 on my haircut because I had to get a keratin treatment because my 
my head's kind of like pubes, so it's got to soften it up. <laughs> yeah. This, this is it. Yes. Wow. I, I got a fitness expert on, and we're talking about keratin treatments. And- yeah, man, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. I use, oh, what is it, like herbal essence or something like that. Just like the most cheap stuff I can get at Target, and it sure works Sure you do. Fine. You're full of shit. You, you, no, you, I'm you, serious. You get some fancy Tresemme. stuff. That's what it is. It's Tresemme. That's why oh, it's Tresemme? like $4 a bottle. Oh, oh yeah. ooh, ooh la la. This podcast <laughs> is not sponsored by Tresemme, but if you want to send me some money, feel free. Yeah, which they would. <laughs> Although not if your hairs feel like Peter's. <laughs> or, or if you want to, if you want to talk to uh, Peter's agent, I'm sure he can uh, hook you guys up. Shoot, I got nobody anymore. I got no representation. It's all just me. Okay, so I'm now representing Peter. Um, yeah, I'm taking if, less if, of a percentage. If you want to help me out, I'm all for it. All right, I got you, brother. <laughs> all right, man. So you, you, you've been around. You've been in LA. You've been in Chicago. You're in the Madison yep. area now, Middleton. Yep. So. Yep. You have your own fitness business, Peter Cross Fitness. So you're you're in in person personal training, and then you're also doing you know some classes and things as well. Yeah. Uh, so I started as uh, a personal trainer, and then it was actually when I was living in Chicago that I started off with my class uh, kind of love. I guess I started off at this place called ID Gym that used to be on um, Lincoln Avenue. Okay. Yeah. And so it's like right at the corner of Lincoln diversity. It's gone now, but started doing classes there and just fell in love with it. I love the or class structure. And so I always kept boot camps and classes as kind of like my secondary along with personal training and at the time modeling. And when I moved back from then Los Angeles later on, um, I started doing boot camps just here in town. And then that turned into, uh, after being on the bachelorette and getting more notoriety, uh, I don't even know if, is that notoriety. That's not really, no, because it, it has nothing to do with fitness. You know what, dude? <laughs> but you know, you know how many people get on those shows and then they're like fit and then also they're fitness experts. So, oh, hell yeah. He, Peter was a fitness expert prior and actually a very highly rated um, Ironman. Yeah, as I, as I, I, don't, I don't think I said you did Ironman. So you actually you know, finished top three. I did uh, pretty well. Or well, top three. I, I never got top three in Ironman. I got top three in an Olympic distance and two Olympic. sprint distances. Okay. Yeah. Which well, is still pretty good. You can, that was decent. Pretty good. You can let me lie. It's fine. Uh, but then I have to go back and remember what the why was. It's very strange. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so like I started doing these like boot camps all over town. And then after the show, it led to more people asking if I would do uh, a larger scale boot camp. Yeah. And so I did my first boot camp here in Madison on a large scale. We rented out a football field here in town and 450 people showed up. I mean, people flew and drove in from all over the like, Midwest as far as like someone came in from Dallas, Texas. Wow. I remember them coming up and telling me about it. And I just was that fell in love with it. <laughs> she hated me at the time she was not there <laughs> we're friends now we're good now but at the time no absolutely not I, that was not gonna be a person in attendance you set that one on a t that was on a t for me oh that was that was good though i didn't even think about that yeah. but i was like i just i absolutely fell in love with this yeah. large scale fitness training like the yeah. energy of the crowd and being able to get up there and just be me 100 percent authentic mm-hmm. and have fun with it with all the adrenaline rush of being in front of that many people, like the slightest mistake and you're going to look like a fool. So it, it like, it just got to me and I got hooked. And so I started traveling all around the country, uh, doing the same thing and started booking my own boot camps. I would call wedding venues and set up uh, a, a trade deal. Basically like you give me your wedding venue for like 500 to a thousand bucks and I'll bring in anywhere from hundred to 200 young single women that could potentially use your facility for their weddings at some point. And these companies are like, yeah, it sounds like a great idea. Like we've been looking for ways to market to like, this is our target demographic. Right. And then I'd hire a sound company to come in and hire a stage company sometimes to come in and lighting even in some certain si- or situations. And I do all the ticketing myself and then marketing all myself. And there's, I don't know, 14 boot camps that first summer wow. and anywhere from a hundred to 300 people per one. And it was just a blast. And so uh, companies started to take notice. And so I was just putting all this money away each time with the boot camp. Like I didn't spend any of it. I would spend money that I got from like social media deals. Sure. Uh, but I kept putting all the money away from boot camps and then signed a couple of big time contracts with like Michelob Ultra signed a, a one year national deal with me uh, for my boot camps. And I went on a tour to the most incredible places. Like I was in. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks arena. I was in the, um, oh God, I'm drawing a blank right now. I was on Dodgers field. I was on uh, 
the Thunders arena. I was in the Pelicans arena, like all these insane places. So cool. But then all this money I put aside and eventually was able to put a huge down payment basically onto equipment and a space. And then just about a year and a half ago now opened up a gym. Man. And, and yeah. that's really smart because I, I saw you, I saw you doing this stuff. I'm like, okay, there, there's another, there's a plan here. Oh yeah. You're, you're a smart guy. I'm like, he's going to open, like I kept telling Ryan, like he's, he's, he's going to open something. I think we had talked about that prior, but it's like, I never thought that you were trying to get on a show to, to, to do more shows or whatever the Island shit or whatever they're doing. So, no. I mean, when you have an opportunity like that, you got to strike while iron's hot and it makes a ton of sense. And, and I like how you just nonchalantly went over a hundred, 200 single women each time. <laughs> so you just kind of like brushed that over. I was coming back to that. So I, I, I hosted one of these events that you did. Uh, it was, it's called strength in the city. That was a fun one. It, it, it was a good one. It was, Minus all the goose poop and the cold weather. But. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of goose poop. It was on Northerly Island, if anybody's familiar with Chicago. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of geese. And you, you did have the biggest class. Yeah, there was probably 100 or so women. And I remember getting up there because the, the front row, man, I don't know how long they took to do their makeup and lashes. <laughs> they, they were ready to go. Uh, but I do have to give it to you. You stayed there for... God, it had to be an hour oh. or two hours afterwards, at least. And you Absolutely. talked to every single person that came up to you. And I'm sure there was a lot. There was probably a good amount of crazies in there if you've got a, a hundred women coming to see you. But you hey, dude, I was you, always handed a few numbers throughout the, the line of uh, just like two or three, just yeah. a couple, just yeah. a couple. Never uh, called anybody. I made a very strict rule. There's no fraternization with. Uh, you know, your, your members and your clientele. And to me, that was exactly that. So never once fraternized. Wow. Very proud of that. He was able to say that with a straight face. Nice job. Man. I was. Because <laughs> it's true. I believe uh, it. But yeah, it just, it just goes back to, I mean, how you handle yourself. And I, I know I've always, it. I've always respected that. Um, you've always been professional. Um, Thank so you. Truly. Respected. Well, just to like speak to that when I was, um, well, first of all, to back up, like, I never looked at being on The Bachelorette as creating like any sort of celebrity. I thought it was like, I'm just a normal dude doing my normal thing in the view of a camera, I guess. And so after the show, like people obviously had more attention towards me or like I, I was, I don't know, just my name was known in more people's minds basically. So. I never wanted to act any different, treat anybody different, anything like that. And I'll never forget when I was 13, 14 years old, I was still a 49ers fan at the time and um, went to a 49ers training camp, watched their practice. After the practice, all the guys come over to sign autographs. And at the time, this guy, Jeff Garcia, who was their terrible quarterback at the time, mm -hmm. comes up and he just like looks at me standing there next to my dad, who's in complete Packer gear. And it's like, nah, and just walks away. But Terrell Owens, who was a rookie at the time, comes up and comes straight over to me with my dad sitting in all Packer gear, grabs my like piece of paper or what it was like book that I had, signs it, talks to me, and like is the only 49er who went out his way to do so. And to this day, I always just thought, like, that's exactly how you should be. If anybody starts to give you attention, you need to make sure that everybody gets the same attention in return. Right. Like, don't single people out, don't treat anybody any different. And even though like I never felt like that celebrity, I didn't know how other people looked at me. Right. And so if there was one person in that crowd who did see me as that celebrity, quote unquote, like I didn't want to affect them in a negative way to make them feel like they weren't good enough or they weren't important or like, this is what people with attention are like. They're just snooty or rude or whatever it is. Like I never wanted someone to have that, that feel. So Granted, there are still people who obviously dislike me for whatever reason, but I always try my best. Yeah, but, you know, that speaks a lot to your character. And I've trained Oscar-nominated actors and all sorts of people and celebrity chefs. And, and that's the one thing. Actually, the first ever celebrity I trained was um, celebrity chef Art Smith, who was Oprah chef and Top Chef Masters and stuff. And every time I saw him at a restaurant, and that's especially when people recognize him because chef at a restaurant, like where do I see you from? He would stand up if he was in the middle of a bite 
and the guy would stand up. He'd often hug these people and talk to them. And, and he's like, I always just, you know, he's like, I want to treat them well because you're right. You never know. Like you're that 13 year old kid and now you're well known. And Terrell Owens like just went out of his way. And that says yeah. a lot. And even when I was training Terrence Howard, I would go to his place in Chicago and he'd be in the gym there and somebody would come up to us during a training session and I would be pissed off. You know, like you're, I'm literally training this man. He would yeah. stop and he'd shake their hand and I'd have to say, Hey Terrence, I'm going to have to be the dick. When somebody comes up, I'm going to have to stop them for you because you're too nice because you're talking to everybody. So mm-hmm. let me be the asshole because I need to get his, I, I'm getting paid by Fox to get him in shape. So if I've got these people coming up, even though they're the residents of his building, they keep coming up, they keep interrupting his workout. He's not going to get a good, good workout in. I'm not yeah. going to make money. So that's what had to happen. But I truly appreciate it at the same time. I mean, the people I way think, to go, Dick. Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> I'll be the dick. Um, I think people miss that. And that's a great, great way to look at it, man. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to talk about COVID or anything. It's obvious, dude, you, you, you run a gym. So that is going to affect you tremendously. But that it did. Let's talk about why we are so unhealthy as a country. I mean, we've got a 42% obesity rate. That's not overweight. That's obesity rate. And we spend more and more on fitness each year. I mean, it's great that home fitness is getting huge right now and everybody's trying to do something, but where in the hell have we gotten wrong? We keep spending all this money. What have you seen? I'm working with people online and then in the gym, where do you feel like we're kind of missing the boat here? I think it all starts with like mindset. And that is where do we create our self-worth? Where do we create our opinions and things? Where do we receive our information? And if we have no certainty in something, we will fall for anything. And so people I feel like are falling victim to a fitness culture right now that is preying on the uninformed or uneducated. They're throwing all these different pieces of equipment and advice and plans and diets and pills and shit procedures now at people and people just assume because it's on a commercial where the guy had six pack abs, it must work. Not knowing that that guy probably never touched the piece of equipment in the first place that guy didn't and just got paid. Shit, yeah. yeah. It's like watching a professional athlete advertise for McDonald's. Right. Like, you know, that guy ate McDonald's in his life. Yes. But you know, he's not doing it anymore. Like, he feels okay with it because he just got a check for $10 million. But at the same time, he knows that in order to be a professional athlete at the top of your game, 90% of those guys or more are not eating the type of stuff that they're probably promoting. Right. And I think like this goes across the board. This is in personal beliefs. This is in everything beyond health and fitness. Uh, there's just too much information being put out there with really good advertising. And just because something is advertised well does not mean that it's actually beneficial to you. Yeah. And so the mindset is now like everything has got to be fast. Everything has got to be instantaneous. Everything has to happen right here and now. And it has to be affordable too. And I can't tell you how many clients that in the first few weeks of training with them, they tell me about all the different things that they've tried. They tell me about like the crazy contraptions that they've purchased uh, I just had one recently and I hope she doesn't listen to this. I won't say her name or anything, but there's now this energy machine that's out there. I've never heard of this thing before. It's $15,000 and it's the size of a laundry basket. And you set it in the middle of the room, you plug it in and it starts to spin at a really high rate of speed and creates this energy force. And you're supposed to sit within, you know, 10, 15 feet of it. And for all I know, like it does have beneficial attributes to it. Like for all I know, like it does shift the energy in your body, but at the same time, like energy is great and we need to get these good energy sources, but for $15,000, like, I don't know, there's a lot more that I could probably do in changing my <laughs> lifestyle. And I'm thinking like, I can start walking barefoot in the grass and be grounded. I can start eating whole healthy foods all the time and get all the vitamins and minerals that I'm missing to help to provide these energy sources that my body truly needs. I can go on a yoga retreat for two months for less than that probably (laughs) and really reset my mind and my thought process. And so I think there's just so many 
tools out there that no one really knows where to start yeah. and know what direction to go. And so I, I kind of sent this to you uh, in email beforehand. My, my true thought in all this is less is more. I, I think people in every aspect in life just about right now need to go back to the basics. Like go back to our foundation of we used to be hunter gatherers and there, there's all this debate right now of is meat good for you? Is it bad for you? Is sugar good for you? Is it bad for you? Is fat good? Is it bad? What kinds of fats? Uh, who knows? Like th there's just so many different theories out there, but at one point in time when our bodies were at their arguably the most efficient, in my opinion, the most efficient, we were eating mostly plants and vegetables, mm -hmm. walking a lot, traveling a lot, expending a lot of energy, lifting a lot of heavy stuff, moving around, using our body weight functionally. And then occasionally we'd catch a, an animal and we'd eat a whole bunch of it. We'd feast on it. We'd load up on proteins that were from an animal source, fats that are from an animal source. We'd get cholesterol from these sources. Right. Um, and we'd go like a few days, weeks, whatever it is, and then we'd get it again. Yep. Like if you just look at the basic anatomy of the human body, we have a digestive system that's set up for animal proteins and plants and for chewing and serrating and grinding and dissolving and absorbing and all these things. If we skip any one of those areas, we're not doing what the body's meant to do. And so the moment you start skipping through things to try and make things faster, easier, or better, right? I think you lose something else. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that's it. Cause you know, I, I'm a human guinea pig and I try all sorts of things. Yeah. But I have afforded myself to be able to do that where I've been an athlete my entire life. You know, I, I'm consistently, I think Brett, Brett Contreras made a quote one time. He's like, don't show me someone that like lost a bunch of weight in a, in a, you know, a couple months or a few weeks. Show me the person that consistently made it to the gym three days a week, lifted three days a week for the past 10 years and consistency and walked and whatever. And, and that yeah. is truly, I think what it's about is yeah. we, we can get in the weeds and you can do all this blood work and everything. Blood work's amazing. But I think mm -hmm. people see like, wait a minute. Okay. Even sometimes things that I'm doing, like Joey Thurman's getting this blood work and he's checking this and whatever, but I'm at yeah. like 90 something percentile of people my age or even younger. Right. So yeah. I can get the blood work and get all that sort of stuff checked. But I started with the basics when I wasn't eating well, like literally, I mean, I grew up in Wisconsin, go Packers until I was 13 in St. Louis, you know? And so I was having all sorts of, well, cheese, if you will, which a lot of the stuff I had was so that of a can, like I'm not even quite sure it was cheese, so, you know, it's fried food. <laughs> I didn't eat a vegetable until I was 24 years old. And my yeah. old business partner, Marcus Warren, who was Mr. Australia in 2002, obviously he had to know what the hell he was talking about. He's like, mate, you need to eat some greens. I'm like, I don't need greens. So how did I start? I took an apple and I took a handful of spinach because I thought greens were gross. I'd bite the spinach, I'd bite the apple and I'd keep doing that. And eventually now I love salads. So I started this one, one step at a time. I didn't go and get blood work. I didn't get my stool checked. I didn't go into some like cold ass chamber or something. All these things have benefits. But I was like, yeah. I started at one step at a time. And this was pre huge right. social media and all that sort of stuff. But you're right. right. Like we need to crawl before we walk and we need to walk before we run. And walking yep. is the most underrated form of fucking exercise. Yeah. Ever. People want to immediately be sprinting. Right. And like, yeah. Walk, literally eat and then yeah. take a minute walk. Do it again. Yeah. Walk again. Like you, you start yeah. there and then that movement and then you hit it like when we were hunters and gatherers. So they're moving more. So even whatever nutrients we were intaking, they were being utilized by the body. So yeah. maybe it's not so much about like what we're not supposed to eat, but about what we are supposed to eat and putting in our body. And I think that's yeah. where we need to change the mindset. And I think that you, you, you really yeah. had that we're just overcomplicating everything mm -hmm. for this $15,000 machine is great. But I mean, she probably could have spent a couple thousand dollars on a psychiatrist, you know, and figured her head out first because it truly yeah. starts, you know, from the head down. So you said it, it starts with the mindset and motivation, but how do people get there when somebody comes in and they want to see you, right? And they're like, I bought this $15,000 machine. I did this. And I'm thinking about getting gastric bypass and whatever. Where, where do you tell them to pump the brakes? How do you handle that? I mean, that's tough. So I'm not a clinical psychologist. I'm not a therapist. I don't have training or education in these areas, right? But at the same time, 
I'm, I am an intuitive person, I'm an intelligent person, and I can usually talk to people and get some information out of them pretty quickly and help. And I can definitely point people in the right direction. Like one thing I love to do with my clients is I offer a, a session with a therapist or a life coach uh, early on. So if I, I like, I'm not feeling like our training styles are matching up, I'll make sure that I get a good idea of what they're actually needing. So like if I'm like a dictator, right, to this person, they're not going to like me versus if I'm very compassionate and empathetic and very kind to them, they'll probably break down a little bit easier and be like more apt to actually listen to me and take my advice. So it's good to see what people actually need as far as push. Um, and there's also things like if you are dead set on, let's say, weight loss, and I can give you all the tools that I know of as a professional for 12 years now on how to attain weight loss. And you tell me you will, you tell me you did, you tell me you've tried, whatever it may be, and it's still not happening. There's probably something else going on. Yeah. And sometimes we get so stuck in a rut that it's hard to see what we're doing ourselves. And that's where like an outside perspective of someone who can dig deeper into your, your psych, like your psyche and your, your thoughts and all that can really help. Um, you know, I, I, I believe that every human is traumatized and we're all working through that trauma throughout life. And it's different varying levels of trauma. Some people have greater traumas through, through their life than others. And we all react to trauma in different ways. And until you can fix or work on or at least see and notice that trauma, it's going to be really hard to fix the outcome of it. Right. So if as a little kid, I had a really traumatic experience and I found, um, let's say, overexercise as my escape it's gonna be really hard now as a 34 year old man who's been over exercising all my life to all of a sudden realize it's not healthy for me so i'm gonna to have to find the root cause of that trauma and help to adjust that become okay with that forgive myself or forgive the traumatic experience whatever it is where it may be that caused that before i can ever start working on the actual outcome of what that did so it truly does start with the mind, as you said. Yeah. And there are certain times where I'll talk to someone and very quickly realize, like, I'm not, I'm not like, qualified to deal with this. Uh, but more often than not, I start with, okay, let's take down a list of everything that you're eating right now, uh, what your daily routines are like. Uh, and I want you to be as open and honest with me as you can by writing down the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, everything that you eat everything that you drink, every emotion that you have throughout the day, um, duration, stress levels, all that. So that way we can start to figure out like, okay, are you eating because you're stressed? Are you not eating because you're stressed? Are you stressed out because you're not sleeping? Are you, I don't know, uh, more stressed out on certain days than others? Like whatever it may be, they all are intertwined. And so I want to get to know the person as much as I possibly can on the background. So the first like one to two workouts, if you will, we almost never touch weight. I get to know them as much as I can. I dig in as much as I can and find out, okay, what path is me best suited for this person to see the most uh, likely chance of success. And so we just talk and we talk like today I had a client for the first time and we talked for an hour and 15 minutes while she walked on the treadmill and just dug deep into what's going on in her life. Uh, what has worked for in the past, why things have changed now, does she have a support system, um, what makes her happy, what doesn't, what are her goals, why are they her goals, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. then go from there. That makes a lot of sense because I think now, especially in the area of exertainment, where we've got all of these you know, yeah, that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. We're, we're not going to specifically talk about that, but I've got, a, I have a point here, you know, where we've got these <laughs> franchise gyms around the world and all sorts of different things and programming is lacking and people come in and come in and they expect that, wait a minute, if I'm not sore for the next three weeks, if I don't get my ass yeah. kicked, if I didn't burn a thousand, I'm not dollars, drenched in sweat. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever board told me that I'm the leader, like they feel like they don't get a good workout. And then, mm -hmm. sure, if you literally, if 
anybody, you go in there and you haven't worked out at all and you work out for six weeks and, and you're getting your ass kicked like that, even if you're having the same shit diet, you're probably going to see some sort of physical results. But eventually your body's going to break down. You're not training the way your body was meant to and taking care of that first step and just like talking it out. Because a lot of people, when I was having people come in, I'm like, like what are you trying to achieve? I want to get in shape. Okay. What does that mean to you? On a context- yeah, like what is your shape? Right. Like, what is that? Like, <laughs> there's a lot of different shapes out there. There's so. a bunch of different shapes. Like, do you yeah. want to look like a celebrity? Okay. You yeah. want to look like uh, Joe Magniello who's like six, five, but you're five foot six. That's not going to happen. You know, like, you know, so contextually based, I think people that they just need to put things into like their own perspective and you can get in as good shape as you can for your body and your genetic potential. But anything yeah. short of like steroids or any other crazy like hormones or supplements, like you're not going to get taller, like yeah. you can get better looking by, I don't know, maybe losing some fat or adding some muscle tissue. But I literally get messages on Instagram. Like, how do I get taller? I'm like, I can, you can, your posture can get better. Like dude, you can I can't improve your posture. Better. Yeah. You can probably gain yeah. an inch if you're, you're good at it. Yeah. Like, okay. You 13, you're going to get taller by puberty. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's but, that too. You know, like I've, Honestly, a lot of people don't look at it that way. They don't just sit in your first couple of workouts, especially when you're paying for a trainer. And I, I can't imagine that yeah. they're cheap. Uh, in Chicago, I was charging $200 for a training session, which is ass. Damn. It's a lot, right? So, but yeah, people are like, Wait a minute, I, I spent an hour on a treadmill. I just paid $200. Like, what? well, there's more to it. And I, I think that with trainers or coaches or therapists, the good ones are with you even when they're not. Yeah. So that, yeah female, I'm assuming that you're, you're on the treadmill, like you're with her now, even like she's still thinking about that. She's probably still assessing her life. And that's what's happening the next time she's grabbing a fork or a piece of cake. And then maybe she's going to put it down because you're that little worm inside of her head. And people mm-hmm. forget about that as opposed to just going inside and like getting a workout with some orange fancy lights or something else because mm-hmm. they just want to work out really hard and they want to be seen. Yeah. Um, so I, I completely agree with that rationale and how you're handling it. Well, and, and that's not to say that getting a good hard workout is bad. And there's sure. some people who need that. Like if that is their motivation, they know it's the only way they're going to get in. What they need to is to go to these, I don't know, like exciting classes, right? Mm-hmm. Where there's flashing lights and uh, loud music and all stuff. Like I love to do that kind of stuff in my class too. Yeah. But at some point your body will, you know, adapt. And it will get bored just as someone does with, if you solve the same puzzle every single day, eventually you're going to memorize that puzzle and you're stop, or you're going to stop advancing and you're going to get bored with it. And you're going to need a new puzzle. Your body is the exact same way. Your body is a puzzle that needs to be reworked from time to time. You need to create new puzzles for it to uh, do. And it's hard to get that through to people right now because the sweat, shows proof in a lot of people's minds right. or the exhaustion or the, the numbers on the watch now really are like the main focus. And I would rather it be incremental changes in strength in feeling and uh, reps, whatever it may be. Right. And starting with like foundational work, starting with the basic movements, like your, your prime movers doing push, pull, hinge, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, it's, t- it's tough to get people back into that mindset, but once they're there and they buy into it, they're hooked. And then they'll go back to these classes where they realize like, wow, these trainers actually don't know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. I was doing horrible form before. No one corrected me for four years. Like no wonder why my knees are shot. And my back hurts all the time. Uh, I'm totally forgotten about in the corner. He's yelling. He's energetic. He's a lot of fun, but I realized like I'm not actually getting any attention and the lights are cool and all that, but I can do like, I, I bought cool lights for my gym too. And I put them on cause they're fun. But at the same time, like the foundation of the workout is what we're focused on first. Okay. And that's secondary. Well, you can always so, notice a difference when there's somebody who's been kind of a, a trainer coach or strength coach when they teach mm-hmm. a class versus yep. someone who's a class instructor. Yeah, there's a there's a big difference. And I'm not saying one is better than the other, but you can tell a difference in their cadence, how they're handling things, how they're cueing different things. Um, Anybody listening, like, go and get a trainer or online trainer, check out Peter, 
uh, and even just do that online and figure out those movements, you know, yeah, your, your squats, your pushes, your pulls, your hinges, maybe your rotational movements and get those foundationally sound. So when you go to a class, then you know how it's supposed to feel and where you're supposed to hinge from or move from. Uh, yeah. because I even trained, I was training class instructors cause they would come to me from one of the biggest exercise gyms in the world, which, um, rhymes with a schmerries. Um, <laughs> And so I would, I would have a guy come to me and he would work out with me to learn different form cueing and stuff. And he was one of the coaches, which I really appreciated that he was doing that because I think that's the thing circling back to when you hire a professional, if it's outside of your scope, it's okay. You are, what makes you a professional is saying, this is outside of my scope. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a hypnotherapist, whatever it is. And then seeking that outside help. I think nowadays people are yeah. very afraid to admit that because we're supposed to be a jack of all trades. Like sure. if, if you're great at speed training and training people to get faster, be great at that. You don't need to be great at Olympic lifting. Like, you know, like if, if you have mm-hmm. that modality, great, then go outside of there. And then if you can expand your knowledge, by all means do so and become the expert in that. But um, seeking outside help, that can only be a good thing. Yeah. A good wow. trainer has a list of, people and resources yeah and we need to know like we need to be managers of our own lives right uh like one of the best things i've ever thought of i think of myself is like if you have a good manager that manager is going to put people in the right positions based on their strengths and you need to be a manager of your own life you need to realize what your strengths and your weaknesses are and you need to then be okay with bringing other people in for those weaknesses or sending people out to it achieve what they need to from someone else. And it's the same thing. Like I am not a strength and conditioning coach. I am more of like a general fitness, weight loss, uh, and class instructor. Like that's what I enjoy. That's what I focus on. I did triathlon for years. I never did the Olympic lifts with professional help. And so I'm not going to teach somebody that because I don't feel comfortable in doing it. If they want that kind of trainer, I hired that kind of trainer. So I know I have someone on staff that can do that for them. Um, but yeah, I, I see too often where people are just teach everything, like especially in these classes where I have people doing swings with kettlebells and stuff like that. Right? I, like I'm seeing this in classes and there's no hinge in their hips. They're just pulling with their arms the whole time or they're like lifting with their lower back. It's like all lumbar flexion. And I'm like, oh my God, you're going to throw out your back. Right. And people just, I think, sometimes need to be okay with not being perfect. Yep. And not knowing everything and just knowing that it's okay to ask for help and tell people when to get help elsewhere. Yeah. You know, I think people need to learn that we have to fail in life. Oh yeah. Like failure is the greatest tool of education. Like I, I believe there's three kinds of intelligence, right? There's smart, there's educated, and then there's intellectual and Educated is someone who learned everything from a book, but didn't question where those books came from, who wrote them, but they take all of it as like gospel. They're smart. And that's people who learned everything through life and experience, but didn't really get a lot from their education, which that was me for a long time. Like I failed in school. I was terrible at school until I found something I was really passionate about in nutrition and fitness. And then there's these people who are more like intellectuals. And these people are a combination of both where they read but then they question it and they put it into action and they learn from that action. And I think that's where a lot of people, myself included are still trying to get to like still trying to take real world experiences and apply education to them and studies to them. So they can have proof and fact, then actually know that this is how I react to it and how that maybe I had a different experience or maybe I had a similar experience. Um, and then be able to give feedback and help to others based on the combination of all of those. Mm. Good. We all want to be, we all want to be intellectual. We don't just want to be educated or smart. That's my, like my opinion. I like to say I'm, I'm all of them. <laughs> That's the way it should be though. You know, it's funny cause I'm very similar. Um, I basically went to college to play hockey and kept my C average to keep playing. Um, but hey, you're passing. You know, C the C's got degrees, man. Well, not degrees. <laughs> I got that degree. 
Uh, but I like what you said. You're going to be a manager of your own life. Um, yeah. That, that makes a ton of sense, man. So where do you see, what kind of drives you crazy that people are still doing when they're kind of have these like fitness and nutrition myths? What are your top ones that still kind of really tick you off when you've got a client coming in and they're uh, telling you something that they've heard? I think the most common thing that I, I get is when really digging into what people have been eating is a lot of people are not eating enough mm. and then they're eating too much at one sitting if they do eat. Um, if even that is like the one time that they're eating or like, however to say this is like people will have no food for half the day and then all of a sudden have like one huge meal and then nothing again, or they'll eat like a piece of toast for breakfast and then have a small salad for lunch and then for dinner, like, I don't know what's common. Like they'll, they'll have a healthy meal for dinner mm -hmm. and they'll think this is really good. Like these are all healthy things. They had like whole grain toast, they had their lettuce, they had their vegetables and they had, you know, their proteins and some more vegetables and maybe a couple carbs at night. But then I give them a breakdown of what their basal metabolic rate is and they realize it's 1700 calories a day just to maintain what they are at this point not including any fitness, any movement, any stress that burns a ton of calories. So like your brain is only two to 3% of your actual body weight, but it uses 25% of your daily caloric needs. Hmm. So for the average person spending 2000 calories a day, that's 500 calories that your brain needs alone. There's going to be no muscle gain. There's going to be no ish or uh, tissue improvement. There's going to be no recovery of any sort. Um, there's no, going to be no, cognitive reasoning it's just going to be like your it's really your lizard brain right it, it, it goes back to your instinctual thinking of just fight or flight like that's basically always what you're going to be at so you're always going to be stressed anxious and thinking in very basic terms and so if you're only eating say a thousand calories a day but it's all healthy foods your body's actually going to probably not even get a thousand because it's got fiber that's breaking down it's storing and it's also just pushing things through and so I tell these people, like, you're, you're constantly in a state of breakdown. And if you're in a state of breakdown, you can never build. And your body can't burn fat if it also can't build. Like, fat is not a necessary tool for your body. It, it's, it's used for backup energy. And if you can't even get the energy uses that it, it needs, like, why would you burn fat? So it... It's the constant push of getting people to eat more and more consistently. Yeah. And while they're eating good foods, making sure they're getting more of them. Uh, that's, that's the most common thing that I've been seeing in the last few years here. Yeah. Um, I've actually run a lot of these experiments on myself. And my, my basal metabolic rate with my total daily energy expenditure is almost 4,000 calories a day. Damn. And so, I mean, I can just eat. <laughs> And I've been on a, a diet right now uh, for an upcoming podcast called The Vertical Diet, which is developed by uh, IFB Pro, IFBB Pro Stan Efforting. And I've been having 3,500 to 4,000 calories a day, and I've lost six pounds in a week. Yeah. It's oh, crazy. shit. It, it's crazy. So, I mean, and also there, there's certain things that I'm not eating, but I'm still having, dude, I'm having like, I'm, I'm 200 four pounds, I think today, 202, 202. Um, yeah. but I'm still having like literally 400 to 500 grams of carbohydrates a day, but it's from rice yeah. and potatoes and berries or oranges, like things like that, where people are like, Oh my God, you're having like a three to one ratio. I'm still losing weight because my body is utilizing everything that's going in there. And that's really interesting mm -hmm. once you're tracking things. Cause when I moved in with my in-laws, I gained like 15 or 20 pounds because all of a sudden, like I was eating it, like I'd, I'd have like three or four, like I've got massive hands, bigger my face. Uh, I'd have like three or four handfuls of mixed nuts. Like that's a thousand calories right there. And then I'd go and have a pound of meat and I do all this sort of stuff. And I was having like 6,000 calories a day. But when you think about yeah. it and you're, and you're looking at that, and then I've done like five day fast and all sorts of different things, but yeah. I can tell the difference when I start eating more and then my workouts and yeah having a little more sodium before my workout and after my workout, I feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's all sorts of different things that people are just looking at it. Like your, your metabolic rate will slow down and that's why they get that refeeds and diet breaks and all sorts of different stuff. But 
people don't need to do that right now. And if you, if you want to learn about that right. stuff, go to my other podcasts and learn about that. But for you, like, yes, I think a lot of people, they're definitely just under eating like yeah. a bird and they're wondering why they're tired and sick and they can't sleep. And then they're very yeah. frail and they have no energy. Yep. Yep. Well, one thing to add to that is one of the biggest fears then for people is if they start eating more, they're going to gain weight. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, yeah, you're done. Guarantee you're probably going to gain weight. And well, I can't say guarantee you're probably going to, <laughs> you're, like you're probably going to gain some yeah. weight, right? If all of a sudden your body, so like our bodies are so efficient to maintain life that they don't care what you do really. Like your body's basic instinct is to just conserve life at all costs. And so it will change its energy pathways and change its storages and its expenditures and pulling from what to use energy throughout the day. And so if someone's really, really low on calories on a consistent basis, your body's going to shut, or your body's probably going to shut down a lot of its natural energy sources and it will start to break down tissues, muscle. Eventually it will get into fats. And if all of a sudden you start eating a whole bunch more calories because your trainer tells you to, your body's not going to be able to just shift right out of that because it's for years been telling itself, I'm not going to eat for the next 24 hours, or I'm only going to eat a little tiny bit for the next 36 hours, 48 hours, whatever it is. And so it's going to continue on that pathway. So it's gonna be like, thank God, finally some food in here. I know I'm not going to get food again. So I'm going to store all this away as a really abundant source of calories, which is fat. And so it's going to store it as probably subcutaneous or visceral fat. And then it's going to go back to what it was doing, which is breaking down tissues and, you know, breaking your body apart. So it's going to take repetition. It's going to take time. It's going to develop over a couple of weeks or even months for some people based on how long you've been doing this. And that, that's not for everybody. Some people are, you know, pretty quick. And I think the more healthy you are, the more likely it'll be quick to change. But for most of my clients, I warn them, like, you're probably going to feel overweight. You're going to feel sluggish. You're probably going to bloat. Your pants are going to be a little tight for the next few weeks. But when your body starts to realize like, oh, this is good. This is going to keep happening. It's going to become more efficient. Right. And once it's more efficient, it's going to build muscle and it's going to burn fat way faster and way more effectively. Like, or for when you do have these, you know, bad days, it's not as detrimental to you. And you can have that piece of chocolate cake. You can go out for a night with the buddies and drink and all that stuff. And your body won't take as hard as a hit from it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's huge. Um, that I think really people. Um, I, I know my mom's that way. My sister, they they barely eat, and it's kind of yeah. like with family. You may experience this. Like, even though this is what I do for a living, my advice doesn't matter. Somebody else uh, could tell you, but um, anybody in a relationship probably knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been in that relationship. <laughs> we've, we've 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 all been there. Uh, what are some um, what are some workout fads that you kind of wish they would go away? I think kind of what we already kind of touched on, which is um, these, I don't know, chains that are really high energy, dark lights, flashing lights, loud music, loud trainers coming up with the coolest, newest, most exciting moves every single workout. Mm -hmm. Um I think they're a lot of fun. And I think for someone who is consistently active, there, there are some benefits to them. Um, I think they're a great way to get the, the population moving. Yeah. I mean, if, if we have an obesity epidemic, by all means, do whatever the heck you can to actually be active and be healthy. And if it's these classes, I'm never going to stop you from doing it. That being said, I think that a lot of high rep pounding movement in any joint is going to long-term have ill effects. Yeah. I think that trainers who can't see your body fully while you're moving aren't going to be able to correct it quite as well as they could in the lighter space. Uh, I think we use a lot of verbal cues and if the music is so loud and the, the trainer is screaming, you're going to miss a lot of stuff and you're going to end up doing something probably wrong and it won't be as effective. Like exercises have a very specific plane of motion and a very specific movement to each joint. And if that's off by even the smallest amount, it can cause damage. It can create injury and pain. And so I think it would be good to back off a little bit on these things and allow for kind of like a, a reset on our classes. 
and know that like lights a little bit brighter is a good thing. Music yeah. a little bit quieter is a good thing. Um, a little less just freaking go for it all out, sprint, jump, throw, whatever it is all the time, like a little less. So that's okay. Yeah. Um, burning calories is great. Sweating is great, but your body can only do so much of it so many times where eventually it's going to be like, okay, I'm stressed the hell out. Yeah. I need a little break. And try to do a warm up and cool down. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many classes I've taken where like you just jump on like, all right guys, two minute warm up on the treadmill. We start sprinting. <laughs> what? Like I'm 34 years old. That is going to tear something guaranteed. Yeah. 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 And, and then they're talking about, okay, so I want you to do a two minute incline jog followed by a minute incline sprint. I'm like, that's impossible <laughs> to sprint for a minute. You realize like, yeah, that your energy system can't, really produce ATP CP for more than like 10 seconds. Yep. So, and you need a minute and 27 seconds to recover. Yeah. You can run hard, <laughs> for yeah. minute, but you can't right. sprint. Uh, right. And then, then, then jump off of this and go into a deadlift <laughs> for two minutes. Is big yeah. Way. While your hip flexors are shot because you're <laughs> sprinting at an incline. And so now your hips are going to be out of alignment and let's do deadlifts. We're going to put immediate load on your lower back. Yeah. You, you, just nobody's gonna be walking for the next three days because they're back and hip flexors are shot. Yeah. Right. But you know, often they think that that's exactly how <sighs> it feels. So, yeah. um, I, I often shy away from my own advice on the podcast, but if you do anything, do like a 10 minute primer warm up, just yeah. light, light jog, run, maybe some squats, some planks, some things like that, maybe some bank yeah. work and then take the equivalent amount of time. Some foam rolling would be great. Equivalent amount of time to cool down and put your body in more of a, uh, parasympathetic state as opposed to sympathetic we're just crazy go 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 and then you're trying to chug a yep. protein shake right afterwards that, that would be very <laughs> beneficial too <laughs> oh man well here's another thing that so i always try and give people advice and information for them to use like just think for themselves when they get to a space so when it comes to like warming up if you go into a class and there is a warm-up but the warm-up has nothing to do with the actual exercises you're doing what was the point? Right. So really start to pay attention to like, okay, what motions are we doing? Do they mimic the motions of the exercise later on? If not, there is really no need for it. If the trainer explains to you like, okay, yesterday we had a really heavy leg day. We're going to warm up legs, but we're doing upper body. Okay. I get that a little bit more, but if you're doing things like, um, I don't know, squats, and then you just go do all deadlifts all day. Well, what the hell is the point? Like that I need to warm up my hips and my hamstrings. And if, now my quads are great. My calves are great from doing squats. Like kind of defeated the purpose of that warm up. Yeah. So be your own, like, I don't know, observer and, and think, I just, I encourage people in every instance to think no matter what someone ever tells you, don't just go with it. Think about it and really decide for yourself. Like, is this what I want it to be for myself? Good. All right, you're a busy man. I got one more question for you, and I'll let you. Sure. Uh, where do you think the future of health and fitness is headed? Ooh, you ever seen that movie Wally? Uh huh. Fuck. <laughs> uh, personally, I believe Wally is one of the most accurate depictions of what our future population is headed to, and I don't mean that in a negative way. But I believe that Amazon is by and large, and we are in such a click culture now where it's like, just click it and put it in your cart mm -hmm. and don't even think about it. Do it. They tell you like, this is what's good for you. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to ask questions anymore. I'm not going to think for myself anymore. I'm just going to follow the masses because I'm too afraid to speak up for myself and have a thought and a, a say in it. And I'm really worried that in fitness, we're just being thrown onto treadmills like hamsters and like all being run through the same workout, even though all of our bodies are very different, all of our goals are very different and we're all being put through the same ringer. And eventually it's just going to get to a point where like someone's going to tell us sitting down for 12 hours a day is really good for you because oh. it benefits them. Yeah. And they're going to make money from this perfect ergonomical chair that they just created. That would be great for your back. And everybody's like, oh, well, I don't have to work out because it vibrates and whatever. Like, it, it's going to just revert back to these 
weird contraptions of the fifties and sixties with like the vibrating belt that worked out for you and all that stuff. And I, I'm very worried that um, the need for ease is going to take over the fitness world. Uh, but that's also why I created a general fitness gym. I didn't want to stick to any trends. Yeah. I wanted to create a space that was adaptive with the times. Like as TRX phases out and I don't know, Bosu balls phase out, the next exercise comes in and I can adapt to that in the space. I didn't want to make something that's just spinning or just running, whatever it may be. Because functional fitness will always reign supreme in my opinion. Uh, doing like your main movements with pushes, pulls, and hinges, like that will always be the most important. So I want to create that space so that way I can avoid all these you know, trends as we go. Create the space so you can avoid the fat people on segways. <laughs> that, that movie, I'm telling you, man. The, <laughs> the, just look at it. The earth is destroyed. It was taken <laughs> over by robots basically we have to move to outer space and everybody's just following amazon and buying smoothies because like just a couple years ago i got hit up by a couple different companies that were like hey try out this smoothie that we have now it has all of the like vitamins and minerals and nutrients you're gonna need throughout the day in one drink and i was like never in a million effing years like i'm not going down that path eat an apple drink some water eat a piece of steak yeah. Like, oh man. All right, Peter, where, where can people find you, my friend? Uh, you can check out my gym on petercrossfitness.com uh, or on Instagram. And then uh, my personal Instagram is Peter Krause, W I. It's K R A U S W I. For Wisconsin, it's not Krause. <laughs> I get that sometimes. I'm sure you get that all the time. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, my friend, it's been a pleasure having you on. I'm Joey Thurman. And remember, don't be a fatty, F-A-D-D-Y. Be a part Ooh. of the future. <laughs>